After landing in Diradawa, I headed to the bus station to catch a bus to the nearby city of Harar. Along the way, we hugged sagebrush-covered switchbacks as we traversed the desert landscapes of eastern Ethiopia. Alright, the bus ride took about an hour and 20 minutes uh, from Deirdau. I'm finally here at the Winter Hotel, right in the heart of uh, downtown Harar. So it smells like cigarettes. Pretty divey. Alright, so I'll give you a quick tour of my room. The TV does not work. It has two plugs and one outlet that I'm currently using to charge the camera. Bed, very stylish. Toilet is actually filthy. And then there's that adorable tiger on the wall. Very, very, very interesting decor here. Took a little while to get out of the hotel. I got a 4.30 a.m. wake up today, so I'm definitely overtired. That said, I'm gonna go explore the old town now and hopefully have enough energy by the end of the day to check out the hyena feeding on the edge of the city. As you can see, there's lots of uh, wildlife. Hello, how are you? Welcome to... Thank you. I'm still on the main drag. Haven't uh, gone onto the alleyways yet. I'm gonna go down to a coffee roastery just about a block away. I am in the heart of the alleyways here in Harar. Kind of on the north end of the main street, so I'm gonna cross over, dip down to the south. There's a lot more alleyways down there, but uh, things are starting to get very colorful here, so it's really a vibrant place. It does remind me of Fez uh, in Morocco quite a bit. A pretty atmospheric here, lots of different colorful buildings everywhere. Gotta watch your step though, there's uh, lots of uneven footing here. Town, well, tiny mosques like this are everywhere. The city has a total of 82 mosques within one square kilometer of this old town. The old town is actually walled as well. place. You never know what to expect when you're on each corner. Every road is different. There's also some very impressive what seem to be colonial mansions. I'm not sure because this is not a colonized country, but definitely much newer than the rest of the city. Like a lot of people on the streets, everybody is selling chat. Every single person. All right, tons of homeless guys around. They're literally sleeping on the road. <laughs> All right, 
Alright, I guess this is the Italian square here. Some beautiful Moorish arches. Hello! <laughs> They are pounding chats to make a paste. Yeah. You can see the greenness of the chat. Ah, man, look at Money, money. Hello, money. There are some incredible treasures looking around every corner here. So beautiful old houses painted in uh, these just candy color. Creams mostly. Just beautiful, decrepit. It's really beautiful here, it's really crazy. Really aggressive kids around here. Um, there's a bunch that came up to me, like in a group of five, started to try to get into my pocket. It's not the cleanest place in Africa, that's for sure. Oh, I've been spotted. Hello! Oh yeah. Yeah, this place could use a litter pickup day. Just trashed. It's sad. These kids are kind of playing sled in water oil containers. I'm not sure what those are. Gas containers. All right, so if you walk long enough, you eventually get back to the main road, and I'm here right at the center, exactly where I started earlier today. I'm gonna get a bajaj because my iPhone died. All in all, a pretty successful sightseeing trip. I literally just made it. It's coming down like crazy now. The downpour started as I was exiting uh, the tuk tuk, so. Definitely well timed. All right, it's just before 7 p.m. I'm gonna get myself a tuk-tuk here and head down to the hyena feeding site to check out this spectacle that's famous all over Africa. So the only place in the world where you can uh, feed hyenas with your mouth if you're into that sort of thing. I'm gonna play it a little bit safe. I heard these things are rife with disease and so forth. So that said, I'm gonna maybe feed one with a stick. Otherwise, I'm gonna be a spectator. All right, they're calling the hyenas right now. No activity yet. It's a bunch of camel meat right there. Pretty crazy. Huge. Such a cool experience. I'm just waiting here for the tuk tuk to arrive. I had to go back to the hotel. Show's over. I guess they do this all night until 11 p.m. So they seem to be holding out hope that somebody is going to show up and uh, continue the show. But for now, I'm the only one left here. It's a really cool experience. Very surreal to see them feeding the hyenas. They seemed pretty tame. I wasn't really scared or anything like that. Probably is a lot safer than 
it looks. They're wheeling away all the camel meat now, so I think they're actually winding down for the night. Yeah, the one hyena just hiding in the shadows here. See the eyes poking back at you. <laughs> Alright, allegedly there is a bajaj coming for me. Is it okay? Yes. All right, I am eating shiro right now with some injera. Really delicious food here at the hotel. So the shiro is a uh, bean-based dish that's so made with um, basically puree, I think it's pureed chickpeas. I'm gonna head back to the old town for about an hour just to get some fresh Harar coffee, which is the best coffee in Ethiopia. And then I'll be heading back to Diradawa to catch the flight over to Djibouti. <laughs> All right, I've arrived here at the entrance to the old town in Harar. Uh, this is the western gate into the old town. So as you can see, the main street here in Harar is far from scenic. It's pretty utilitarian and functional. I'm probably not gonna have that much time to go wandering down the alleyways today, but uh, I hope you got a sense of that yesterday. Lots of stuff to see here. My main goal is to head down to the Harar Coffee Roasters and pick up some coffee as a souvenir for the way home. I'm definitely enjoying the cooler air here. Uh, it's about 22 degrees outside right now. It's going to be 41 when I land in Djibouti later on today, so I'm definitely getting closer to the Middle East at this point. Jumia Mosque. Uh, they're having their call to prayer right now. And I believe that is why the Nure coffee shop is closed. It is completely locked and it's not early in the morning or anything like that. It's almost 1 p.m. So I'm really not sure why, but my hopes of getting actual Harar coffee are probably fading at this point. Well, the verdict is in that the Nure coffee shop is not going to be open for another hour. I can't wait because I do have an hour and a half bus ride to get back to Diradawa. Uh, I get to the airport on time for the 5.30 p.m. flight, so it's 1 o'clock right now. I just can't wait. So I'm going to go find a uh, gift shop around here, somewhere that sells the famous Harar coffee, buy some and get out of here. to a local market to track down the coffee. Donkey in the way. Oh wow. They will add spicy, different spicy, garlic, salt. Yeah, for Berbera. Oh cool. All right, we've made it to the street market. Vegetables, lots of things here. A lot of things, Garlic, potato, yeah. tomato, cabbage. Very good. Uh, spices here. All right, I have tracked down some Harar coffee. Relatively reasonably priced, 60 burr for this. It's pretty cheap. There's the southwestern city gate. I'm going to get on a tuk tuk now and get back to the hotel. pictures there and then I'm off to the airport to catch this flight to Djibouti which leaves in just two hours and 30 minutes. Some really nice Ethiopian Orthodox churches here in downtown Diradawa. I'm just kind of strolling along. It's about a kilometer from where I was dropped off with the bus uh, to the center of the city. So that's where I'm headed now. It is really beautiful and shady here. There's a lot of greenery. Some interesting architecture here in Diradawa. Moorish arches, really cool. Here is the Diradawa train station. Djibouti city is about five hours up the line. So I'm not gonna be doing that because I cannot get my visa um, approved at the border. E-visas are only valid at airports, unfortunately for tourists like myself. All right, off to the airport. Busy, busy, busy day here in Diradawa. 
All right, I've made it to the airport and I'm gonna be checking into Djibouti. The flight takes off in two hours. I am absolutely hot. It's probably 40 degrees inside of this airport. So I am cooling off now with a beer that I did not get to try while in Harar. And it is the aptly named Harar beer. And what the hey, I will have a Hibesha as well. I just bought a massive bottle of water for a dollar, not even a dollar US, about 80 cents US. Uh, mostly because the water bottles in Djibouti are five US dollars. We probably should go board the flight pretty soon. It leaves in 40 minutes, so maybe playing Russian roulette here. Hopefully it'll be okay. This is the mass of 757 that's gonna take me over to Djibouti in less than 20 minutes. So it's a very short flight. Finally in my hotel in Djibouti city. It was a little bit Spartan, but you know what? For 70 bucks in a town this expensive, I am pretty pleased with it. I'll show you the washroom as well. Everything's pretty clean though. It's all marble floors. They have AC, questionable power, but uh, it's the washroom. Other than that, can't go wrong with a pretty clean hotel for that price in this city. Anyway, I'm gonna call the mate. 